from Lavoie. Special guest, power to the poetry, and comedy from Hannah Tilly. Your host, some kid's dad, and the man who wants to be his son, Ryan Dean Tucker and Sean Glasser. This is true. This show, Lilac City Live, won the Urban Library Council's Innovation Award. It's, it's a, a national, national award. award. Yeah. Thank Actually, you. Actually, thank you. It's, it's hard to see, but they made it so you can't see it. Totally translucent. But that says Urban Libraries Council 2018 Top Innovator, Spokane Public Library. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Um, we were very excited about that. It's um, a big deal for us. And, you know, it was a very prestigious event. They mm -hmm. flew us out to Baltimore. Uh, that's where it was held. Full, and full, uh, to full be honest, I thought it was uh, Urban Dictionary. Yeah, I love that website. Like, that's weird that we yeah. they give out an award. But Whatever, no, it's I'll the take Urban it. Library Council. But we were up against some uh, real heavy competitors. Yeah, serious stuff, yeah. Innovators and the uh, just innovators, and you know we won. But here's here's pretty cool. Here's a, what we were up against was uh, the Buffalo Public Library. What were they doing? Uh, being loud was encouraged. Oh, I mean that is different. <laughs> you know, it's taking the idea of the library. You know, in a that's a library direction. innovation. Absolutely, right? <laughs> cutting edge. Yeah, the Kalamazoo Public oh, yeah. Library. Yeah, what were they doing? Therapy cats. Therapy. Aww. Aww. People love that one. Yeah. That was we're honestly pretty wholesome. We're neck and neck. <laughs> neck and neck with Kalamazoo. Uh, the so Biloxi uh, Public Library. Oh, sure. Two hip white librarians read and dissect the color purple for at risk youths. Ah, uh, yes. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Palm Springs. Mm, what do they got Swanky. cooking? Swanky. No books, just Kindles. Ooh, flashy. Got rid of them. Who the needs new them? library. Not well received, yes. Agreed. Oh, no. Yes. Oh. And uh, the last and final that we beat was yeah. the Minneapolis Public Library. Ooh, what do they got? Uh, they hold a single dad John Grisham book club slash support group. Ooh, yeah, hand in hand. hand so, in you know, hand. some real heavy competitors, but uh, we took home the gold. Or the we glass. are the chosen ones. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Now... Speaking of innovation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're going to bring up our first guests. Oh, fantastic. Terrain co-founders, Ginger Ewing and Luke Baumgarten. Come on up, guys. Ginger and Luke, come on up. We all build this. We all build this. We all build this. Hey, guys. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Thanks so much for coming Thanks on. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. This, I'm just... Have a huge smile on my face. That's awesome. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Really bright. yeah. Thanks yeah. for having us. Ooh, Sean, put up the thing so everybody can see how pretty. Oh it is. yes, okay. the sky. That's my line. favorite. Do the thing. Do the thing. Th <laughs> you know, cla Sean's classic. The like. thing. <laughs> Everyone knows the thing. It's like the worm, <laughs> but it's the thing. Yeah. So, Terrain co-founders. Does everybody know Terrain? You obviously, should. yes. Um, right out of the gate, I guess. How? How did it get started? When did it get started? Yeah, 10 years ago when there was nothing even close to as cool as Lilac City Live. Yes. We were you. young, <laughs> relatively young, younger people in Spokane. <laughs> and all of our friends were moving to other places because they said there was no community here. And enough people said that that we were like, that's like totally enough to be a community. So right. we started thinking about what we could do and what we came up with was the idea for this one night art party. Oh, OK. Uh, it was like all of our creative and like talented and ambitious friends, sort of like, you know, the idea that like Spokane is a place and ambition goes to die. We're like, let's try to like change that narrative. A little yeah, bit. get rid yeah. of that. Yeah, and stigma. I was at uh, the the NAC as the curator for cultural literacy there. Luke was at the Inlander and had done a little bit of everything um, that mainly was writing about arts and culture. Uh, Patrick Kendrick. Um, was probably the largest independent music booker in town at the time. For sure. Um, and then Sarah Honer, she has since moved to LA, and then Mariah McKay were kind of the original um, group who, who decided that this might be a good idea. Yeah, and it has certainly been a good idea. It's just grown and grown. This year you had 
like a record number of yeah so we actually yeah we Amazing. started touring it was supposed to be a one night only one time thing fast forward 10 years um this year we had 467 artists submit uh you were one of them i, I made the People cut will be a part of the show I made the cut. Um, I invited us on the and show. i think it was 2039 <laughs> there's no way <laughs> there's no good yeah. Yeah. yeah in 2039 <laughs> and so we have room for about uh, Fifteen percent of that. Um, so it's a, a really strong show. Um, we define art really broadly. So it's music, it's performance art, it's theater, it's literary readings, it's um, a full musical lineup. It's a little bit of everything. So. Well, that's awesome. I'm really excited. I mean, I've been going for I think six years. Cool. I've been going. It's great. And like, I take my kids. It's super fun. It's great. And the you know the space is awesome now that you're at the Jensen Bird building. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's really cool, um, and I, I, I love it. It's a great event for everybody to go to. But uh, to talk to more about you guys is, did, were you? Don't want to bore you too much. Growing up, yeah. did you plan on uh, <laughs> being? Well, I uh, wanted to be a, a doctor, I think. Uh, but then I was like, right. I, re I had this like, I remember that I like, when most kids were like, I grew up in the country, and when like everybody was like out playing like army men or something. I like wrote my mom a report about George Washington when I was like in first grade. And I was like, are any of these facts right, mom? She's like, I don't really know. <laughs> so I think I always knew I was a writer. But so you're going to be a, a historian or a doctor Yeah, yeah. Uh, six years old. But it also could have been fiction, because it like, might have been totally wrong. It, was just, it could have been about a character named George Washington. Who that would be an amazing thing to find out. Like, All right, like, time to fact report. check little me. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Check out Luke's uh, fan fiction of George Washington coming out soon. It's amazing. It's a little racy around the middle, but okay. it's like, Mostly PG-13. Hard PG-13. And Jenny, yeah, what about you? Did you, did you want to um, be... Yeah, so I, too, had the ambitions of being a doctor or working in a donut shop. It was like my very <laughs> early memory. I like that. Cheney, I, like I grew that. up in Cheney. Cheney had this killer, I think it was like Daylight Donuts or something. Anyways, I wanted to work in a donut shop. Um, fast forward a little bit uh, later, I went to school for forensic anthropology. Oh, um, I grew up on Unsolved Mysteries and Robert Stack. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. give it up. Keep it going. Um, Seriously. That song? Oh, yeah. The intro oh, yes, song? yes, yes, yes. <laughs> terrified me oh, as a child. Oh, it's so good. It's a, well, you never know when there's going to be a UFO or a ghost story I mixed know. in there, and you're just like, oh, it's spooky. <laughs> Oh, yeah. that's like, so it terrified you. It's like literally what she falls asleep. It's like a lullaby. It's my lullaby. Yeah. 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 It's horrific. I still watch uh, reruns of Unsolved Mysteries. I just yep. imagine a like, yeah. VHS tape with yes. a masking tape on it. <laughs> Maybe you and I should talk later because I know you have yeah, a collection. Yeah, you have quite the collection. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's great. Uh, and and then, then I just somehow, I, so long story short, I ended up at the museum, and it's right. via the museum that I started to really fall in love with the arts community yeah. um, and, and realize uh, all that they provide for Spokane. Oh, so. yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. Did, and did you guys, where, when did you guys meet then? So when I was at the Inland Air, so kind of like, like, it took me a while to make this connection, but kind of before we started Terrain, my colleagues and I, who are, you know, relatively young people in Spokane working at the paper. And now we're kind of... Like, very, relatively yeah. very old people. Fast forward to train at 11, and we are too old for this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sick, well, my like, body hurts. Yeah, yeah. She's, she's sick. But, like, I was, we were thinking about, like, we used to, like, hang the show ourselves and, like, power through by just, like, drinking beer until, like, 3 in the morning and hanging it. And now it's like, I get a headache just looking at beer. Right. So, it's kind of crazy. But, um, so, we were... I was at the Inlander and we're like, how can we sort of like figure out who's like young and actually not trying to leave Spokane or like trying to do s cool stuff in Spokane? And so we did this thing called 20 Under 30. Because like a lot of magazines do 20 Under 40. But it's like, what about the people that are doing cool stuff like right out of college? Sure, like yeah. Early 20s. So we did it. It only re ended up happening once. We hoped to make it like an annual series. But we so we solicited all these, uh, all these uh, like nominations from everybody we could find, like doctors, lawyers, like who are your most young and promising colleagues and ambitious and cool, creative. And Ginger gets nominated. Uh, I won't name the colleague that co-edited the section with me, but we're going through the candidates, and I'm like, oh, this Ginger Ewing person seems pretty interesting. And Joel's like, Oh, you just named him. No, you sorry, so Joel Smith, former, former web editor. <laughs> we'll show. edit that out for the yeah, YouTube yeah. show. <laughs> He's actually in witness, witness relocation now. So. No, um, yeah, sorry, Joel. Um, I think the mafia's going to be after him now. Uh, so... He's like, nah, I don't know if this is right. I'm like, no, she looks really good. Like, let's take a second look. And we'd given each other, like, a passion vote and a veto. A hard veto. Like, a, yeah. yeah, and so he's like, 
I don't know, man. I'm not feeling it. I'm like, no, I think she's, she could, no, she could be good. I think she's good. She was doing work with like the local area tribes. It's just like a really interesting story. And he's like, I, I would I maybe use my veto on her. And I'm like, well, if you use your veto, then I'll use my passion boat. So, <laughs> he's like, fine, well, you have to interview her. I'm like, fine, I will interview her. And so that was the beginning. And then. Just think Jill and I could have been married. Yeah. 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 Um, so then. We, like, basically four out of the five people that ended up starting terrain were sort of, I helped write this section, and then the other th three of us were um, included in it. And then, so that was actually one of the first, like, events that the Inlander actually did was this little, like, meet and greet with all these, this 20 under 30, and then that started to spark the conversation that ultimately a few months down the road led to terrain. So, kind ah. of a fun story. Love Blossom from Art. Yeah. It did. Yeah. And I was, um, you know, two or three months into our relationship, and I'm just like, all over him and can't get enough of him and fantasizing someday. Uh, by the way, we're married. I think, I don't know if that was clear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, train also for uh, a, a marriage. Um, and. <laughs> Is that weird? Um, and about three months into our relationship, uh, fantasizing about, like, telling our kids how, you know, mom and dad met. And I was like, how did you and Adrian meet? He's like, uh, I interviewed her for a story. So. Are there any journalists in the audience? No? Like, okay, all you do is work. Like, so I was like, I met all of my friends, most of my enemies, right. and now my wife, working. Like, I was writing all day long. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, sorry. Sorry, that's not like a more romantic story. Yeah, so that's how really we, making it romantic. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's great. <laughs> But we did, but like speaking of bearing, well, the event bearing a child, I was actually thinking the other day that we're like, now that we're at 11, and it feels kind of like train, does feel like our child, it's like, we could just start theming our, like, terrains after like, is it like 12 or 13? It's like the, bot, that would be the bot mitzvah right, terrain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, the sweet 16. Yeah, like, yep. we could do a quinceanera yeah. terrain. Oh, absolutely. Like, yeah, it's like, baby's growing up. Oh, that'd be yeah, great, absolutely. that'd be fun. Uh, what, should we try his mic again? Is Can that you ready? guys hear me all right? Checking. Is that Anyone? better? Yep. Oh, Am I back on? Yeah. I think cool. Got, yeah. All right, we got it. Now, uh, do either of you do art yourselves? Do you have any? Am I kind of, yeah, I'm a writer. I do some fiction in addition to the you like George journalism Washington and essay. Yeah, the yeah. yeah, it's like it's a whole cycle. It's unpublished yet, so if you know anybody, <laughs> if agents in the audience get at me. It's Over this whole cycle. four thousand pages. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's called George Washington. Like eight chapters on Sasquatch Wooden Slayer. Teeth. Oh. <laughs> This is the, like this alternate history where George Washington ended up in the Northwest. Right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. I like uh, it. Sherman sure. Shields, you could get. Yeah. 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 No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. I, I consider myself an arts organizer. I have a really good eye, but um, I'm not. Nothing really. Have you ever like tried your hand at it or anything? Like um, any any type of medium? I, I'm a creative person, but I, I don't identify as an artist. Oh, okay. So. Interesting. Uh, what about big? Any weird things ever happen at a terrain where it was like oh last God. minute disaster, like or well, yeah. save a pull through? So thing? terrain six, which was our, ended up being our last year in the Music City building, which is like where First Avenue Coffee is now. Uh, so we've always done this event in like raw spaces, and that particular space was like the rawest possible space. Like it, it still, it still technically had the boilers that used to heat it, but they were oh, like yeah. disconnected from the pipes and like sitting up against a wall. There was uh -huh. barely any electricity and certainly no running water. Um, lots of, lots of living pigeons. and dead pigeons. It had like the whole pigeon life cycle in like various floors of the building. And we've been in this space for three or four years and we, you know, we've gotten a ton of press. We've um, sort of, one of the, one of the tough thing, it's, things that's tough as a young person that like you want, when you want to start something, you don't always know like all the permits to get and everything. But we'd like, fit, by year six, we felt like we'd figured out the permitting process. We had a good relationship with the city. The mayor's office had bailed us out once on our liquor license application. So like we were like, People know us. We're not hiding. Right. And then we're literally a week and a half out from Terrain Six, and I get a phone call from a number I don't recognize, and I pick it up, and it's uh, one of our local fire marshals, oh, and he's like Luke Baumgarten. I'm like, yeah. I'm this is Luke. He's like, are you affiliated with a group called Terrain? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, Luke, I'm looking at your application here, and uh, <laughs> and then I I never heard of you before, so I went and. Uh, I went and did a little digging on the internet, and uh, it says this spokesman article I see says you, you get 1,000 people in the event, and by that time, we're getting like 5,000 people to our event. So I'm like, yes, exactly 1,000 people, sir. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but it doesn't sound good. I'm like, yes, no more than, certainly no more than 1,000 people, yeah. but yeah, well, about 1,000 people. He's like, huh, in that building? And he's like, he gives me the address of the building. I'm like, yeah, that building. He's like, 
last time we went through that building, and he like lists off all the reasons that it's like a mat, you know, it's right, like it's yeah. basically like a, a, a fire pit waiting to happen. <laughs> and I'm like, he's like, what? Like what? I don't understand. And it's like he almost just like can't make words. He's so like confused by it. I'm like, I'm I like, just imagine like a cartoon <laughs> character with yeah. fire marker. Well, that's because like, I'm on yeah. the phone. So like yeah. that's exactly what I'm imagining. Smoke coming it's out like, of his ears. It's like it's like yep. it's like it's a mix of like just complete disbelief, but also <laughs> indignation. It's like, how did this possibly this? happen? <laughs> yeah. And so I'm like, well, man, I mean, I'm sorry. It's not like we're hiding from anybody. We put in all of our permits, I think, the right way. Yeah. She's like, it's like, I don't, I mean, yes, but, uh, and I'm like, can we sit down? Like, let's just, like, let's get together and let's figure <laughs> this out. out. And luckily, Reel luckily, it back like, a little. Like, thank God we had just formed our board and we had just so happened to have asked Ben Stuckert, our city council president, yeah. to be on our board. And so we're like, um, I don't know, this is like the second phone call I'm making to you after <laughs> asking you to be on our board, but I think we might have a problem here. And so we need you immediately. We all, we all meet, and the fire, and this is one of the, I mean, the, this is a fun, it's kind of like a potentially tragic story, but it actually also illustrates what an amazing place Spokane is, because like, I don't think this would have gone off in any other city, but the fire marshals were like, okay, cool, well, we, like, they basically made us, like, hire them as, like, human fire alarms. <laughs> That's amazing. And, yeah. They were and not cheap. No, no, no they, they were pretty expensive fire alarms, but like they like they like rolled with it, and then like after we had been sort of like he played he had to play bad cop because he's a fire marshal, it's his job, but then like after a couple after we had like sort of like figured out a plan, he was like, you know, uh, the day I was meeting with you guys, I asked my son if he'd ever heard of terrain, and the only thing he said was. Dad, don't close down like terrain. For the love of, oh, God. For the, for the love of God, God, Dad. God. Don't Dad. close down terrain. So I, was, so I was like, oh, so you were kind of just playing like yeah. the bad cop. Yeah. He's like, well, I mean, I have to. But, right. so, um, but then so like they gave us, that was like the first time we ever had a capacity issue. Like they like we were issued a capacity. Like, sure, how many yeah. we could have it's all these like great things that, you know. And like, this was the sixth one? This was yeah. number six. Well, yeah, well, another, another important key to that is Ben rallied the troops. And so uh, Marcus Riccelli and Andy Billo came down, and they were our clickers um, for the capacity. Make sure you got to, that. So we had, like, to, legislators yeah, and city legislators council people. City yeah, city council people. And then at, by the end of the night, the fire marshal we hired to be there um, by the headlining band was, like, taking video on his camera and, like, came over and thanked us for what we do for that the was community. Cool. So oh, that's, that's amazing. amazing. Yeah. I was like, yeah, we felt like we needed, like, authority figures to work the door because we weren't always, like, the incredible professional people you see. Right. <laughs> yeah, so like, we needed, like, yeah. Speaking of professional people, like, we all know that you guys do terrain and a lot of, like, advocation stuff for Spokane and the arts and stuff, but like, what are your real day jobs? Terrain is her real day yeah, job. Yeah, so Terrain has grown to the point, so we are more than just our flagship event. Um, we now have three flagship events, and we have a gallery space, and a performance arts space, and a retail storefront, um, and a professional development program for artists. Oh, um, and so we have been doing all of this. Uh, Can as you guys tell that it's her job to tell people what we do? <laughs> We've been doing this uh, all volunteer up until about a year and a half ago, and a year and a half ago we were able to hire our first um, two employees and I was one of oh, them. Oh, that's fantastic. So, Train is yeah. now my full-time job. Yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> back up. I think it's real. Sorry. There you go. So dreams do come true, kids. <laughs> yeah. And what about you? Oh, so I, um, I started a, so weird story. So I left the Inlander because, as you may have heard, journalism doesn't pay the bills very well. So I went into advertising for a couple years and um, being a writer at a digital advertising agency is like that scene in Office Space where the, the people are like, so Bob, what would you say you do here? And then the main character is like, well, I do 15 minutes of real actual work. Right. It was like really, like <laughs> writing, writing advertising copy was just such a departure from like what the work that I did as a journalist writing like, you know, five stories and 10,000 words a week or whatever. And so I was like, I got all this free time. So that was actually when I really was able to like spend a significant amount of time focusing on training. But then I was like, well, I don't think I want to be a, in uh, advertising forever. I don't know if I'll be able to go back to journalism. And your wife was like, are you sure about that? Because it pays pretty well. <laughs> it did pay like, considerably better. Yeah. But it was like, so it was like, if I'm going to be a writer, if I'm going to be a freelancer, if maybe I'll like freelance, whatever. I didn't know. It was like, I had written a story about co-working. So I was like, maybe I'll start a co-working space. And like, yeah. with oh, that's also a disaster story. Because Terrain 6, that same also, year, that same year, was the year I signed the lease on the co-working space. He disappears for a couple of hours. And I'm like, where the hell is Luke? And he comes back. He's like, oh, I just signed the lease on a co-working space. <laughs> and Ginger was like, you were thinking about op you're, you're opening a co-working space? Without any consultation. <laughs> consultation. We have really good communication. Yeah. 
Um, but so I, I do that partially, and then I, as um, after I left the, I, I took a job as the interim ED of Spokane Arts a couple years ago, and so I left the advertising gig to do that, and then after that was over, I started my own agency. So I have a small creative firm in town. Well, that's terrific. That's, yeah. that's great. Now, you know, obviously training has just grown and grown and grown and become this huge thing. Is there anything that would like make you guys stop doing terrain? Besides a massive heart I attack. That was going to be my answer. <laughs> I know the pressure like, grows 25. and grows. Yeah. Um, I shouldn't joke about that, knock on wood. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, I think that terrain, uh, I mean, obviously we hope that it gets to a point someday that we can walk away and the organization ca you know, carries on. Um, and we are actually in the process. Um, Jackie Caro is our operations director. She's amazing and she's taken on a bulk of who the organization is now. Mm -hmm. um, our goal, though, is that we always want to be responsive to the community and what we hear the community says that they need. And so train might evolve into kind of different arms, um, but I hope 50 years from now we're still around Absolutely. or 100 years yeah. from now. I hope yeah. we become a legacy institution. I think we all do, right? So. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> well, guys, thanks so much for coming on. Uh, we have one of our writers. Riley Connors, he, oh, yes. um, I know he missed the submission deadline, but okay. um, he has, <laughs> he I think he's a talented young guy yeah, and he's, he has, oh, he's got yes, ideas. I love it. He has a pitch for you he and was like, he don't be kind too of afraid. make yeah. it. And you know, he kind of broke my arm to get, you know, get a, get a shot. Yes, you know? right. so, I love it. Told him to give him a right, Riley Connors, shot, shot, Riley. Riley. Yes. Shoot your shot, Riley. Everybody. All right, good luck, man. Thanks. Yeah, go have a seat here. Yeah. So, you said you had an eye for art. Yes. Yeah. And you, jack of all trades, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, if we could have slides on in the back that could show the art for everybody who's sitting in the third or fourth row. Um, this is the first piece of art that I did. Uh, What's that say on there? Uh, it says Papa. Papa. But the actual. Uh, well, that's not the actual title. <laughs> oh, is it untitled? No, or? no, it's oh, waka waka. <laughs> like that song. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I did this in acrylics. Yes. Yeah. And it's mixed media. It looks like a mon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. What does it look like? It's, it's well, mixed media. It's a, yeah. Mixed. Oh, was it? Yeah. Mixed media and uh, collage. Mixed yeah. media collage. Yeah. Well, I painted this acrylic. all by hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it's a realist. Photo yeah. realistic. Yeah, so, so, yeah. I mean, you can, yeah. you can yeah. hold it if you want. I, don't I don't, don't it. smell it. Don't smell it. Um, I the thought background, for that, that wasn't worth it. The background, old. <laughs> I, I did the red background in my blood. <laughs> so you don't, you don't want to be touching that. Um, okay, so, you know, we, we got that up there. And uh, second piece. Oh. Okay, do you want to hold? Yeah. Like second yeah. piece is this. Uh, did this in watercolor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, like some really good yeah, definition for yeah. watercolor. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Did it in my yeah. basement. Got tired of huffing paint fumes and just decided let's go with it. Uh, so this is, as you can see, the mask, because we all wear masks in our lives. Right. Ooh. It's a metaphor. I and I remember that line. This, in is, the movie. this yeah. is metaphorical. Yeah. I think I'm winning you over. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So I'll all hand right. this one to you guys. <laughs> No, okay, I had a weird question. Did you decide that you didn't want to be a doctor because you realize cows aren't humans living out in the country? I, so funny, funny thing, you're making a joke, but the deadly serious reality is I did grow up in the country and I am the most allergic to cow saliva my allergist has ever How do you met. even and find that is, out? His entire 30 years, because I got licked by a cow oh and my. like broke out so horrifically <laughs> that like, I like went in for an allergy test because I had like seasonal that, allergies. That's the most adorable yeah. affliction I've Isn't ever had. Yeah. <laughs> Just like getting licked by a cow. Oh right? my god, that sounds like your problem. Yeah, <laughs> no, really. Uh, All right. So yeah. What do you think? You think I got a shot? Yeah. I mean, I mean let's let so one thing that we didn't mention is that train is a juried event. So I think what we should do is ask the audience and we'll kind oh, of Oh well know. let's yeah, what do you let's think? give you them this last piece, one. Right? We got one more piece. Because I Final think this one's gonna hammer at home. Uh, let's let's flip to the next slide. Uh, so I did this one in markers. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah. And this is a quote. This is, as you know, the mayor was on the show a couple weeks ago, and uh, we actually became really good friends. And if he, yeah, anytime he talks yes. about clean rivers, yeah. that's actually my stage name. <laughs> so he and I became really good friends, and we were down in Sandpoint, him and I. And you'd be surprised what a hot tub and mojitos brings out in a person. <laughs> and the so truth. it says, 
you know, it's like one of those corny quote posters, but like right. it says, Riley Connors is my best friend. He's a really cool, super handsome dude. Yeah, so sweet. It's really nice. It was yeah. really weird when he said that to me, because like his. How many mojitos in? Not enough. Not enough. <laughs> so and that's count. from uh, Mayor David David D Bones Condon, 2018. Nice. Wow. Yeah, and I just yeah. So. Is that a piece that's pretty personal? Do you want to let go of that? Well. So I mean, the art's for sale. So I mean, what it is for sale. It? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> The other ones, okay, so the first one, if anybody's interested, is $800. Oh, that's really reasonable. <laughs> well, it's my rent. And <laughs> sure. the second one is like, it's like whatever, it's like 75 bucks. Yeah, whatever, know. like, <laughs> honestly, what do you have on you? He'll take it. It's not Did you price problem. it by, like, the amount of, like, money you would have gotten for the plasma out of the blood that you used to paint it? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ooh. So I, I really also would here? encourage you to go through our professional development program because it'll help you price your pieces. He's so good at this. Yeah. yeah, you're good because this one, this is just a handsome kiss. Oh. A handsome movie kiss. A handsome kiss? Was, you mean? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? I a handsome go, kiss? I Do I have any volunteers? <laughs> Justin? <laughs> Do you want to give me a handsome movie kiss? Yes, do it. All right, come on down. Dip him. <laughs> Dippin'. Come on down. Just like the movies, folks. <laughs> Come on down. Oh, boy. All right, let me do this. Take the glasses off. All right. Yeah. Good. Oh. Dude. Oh, <laughs> yeah? Second one, round two. Yeah, take two. All right, come on. <laughs> I like the lean in, but the pull back. The lean in and the pull back, yeah. But what flavor gum are you chewing? <laughs> Riley flavored. <laughs> oh, I guess. I guess now. Yeah. So professional development I program. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just, I just think that you have a future. So. Do you really? I do. Yeah. So can I get my art in this year's terrain? Uh, no. <laughs> Riley Connor. Right. Worth a so. shot. Worth a shot. I'm a real girl. Worth oh. a shot. It's good. Right. Yeah. You made your first sale, buddy. Pleasure meeting Thanks, you both. Riley. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> Made your first sale, buddy. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> made your first sale. Yeah, he can keep it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Riley Connor's an artist, everybody. Yes. Thank you. Before I have you go, I know you're on this board as well. Uh, they uh, wanted me to mention that the Spokane Arts Annual Arts Awards is on Saturday, September 29th, at the Montvale Event Center, featuring live music, poetry, visual art, food, drinks and the award presentation. Uh, the event is the kickoff for Arts Month all of October, a month-long celebration of local arts and culture, beginning with the Fall Arts Tour and the first week of October. Yay. <laughs> you can visit at spokanearts.org. Yes. And then, so Terrain is the fourth and the fifth, so we've, that if those crazy crowds that we talked about don't appeal to you on the Friday night that's a free event, one of the things is like we've decided that like ac access and equity to art is like something that's like a core value of ours. So that event will always be free, but a lot of people come to it. So we do. We started doing a ticketed night the night before. So if you want to come with a chiller atmosphere on Thursday, and you can find out all about that on trainspokane.com. Terrific. Also, just one more thing. I know that we have several Train Eleven artists in the crowd. If you could just stand up, yeah, you want really, to stand up? anyone oh, want to stand up? Artists. Then you're an artist. Hey. You're an artist. You're hey. an artist. You're all artists. Them. Yeah, come see him October 4th and 5th. And 5th. Yes. Oh, you didn't stand up. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm going to toot my own horn. <laughs> <laughs> I have a pretty dope piece in there, though. Really it's excited. pretty rad. <laughs> pretty rad. <laughs> I made the cut 15%. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks so much for awesome. coming thanks on, guys. Please us. come out to terrain. Thanks so much. Thanks, yeah. like, absolutely. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Jimmy. Absolutely. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, microphones are working. Microphones that was are good. on. Uh, thanks, Andy. Andy. Our sound Give it up for Andy. Andy. He's Ruffin. here every month. Toiling away behind there. See, Ryan, I've been telling you, He's, we just got to give out uh, more extra applauses. We, it's like 30 second fill every time. Guys, time. give yourselves a round of applause here. You're a great audience. Sean, that is a great idea. Oh, thank you. Let's give Sean a round of applause. Oh. Thank you, thank you. I do have to say real quick, uh, Andy, 
Andy's having a rough night. Uh, <laughs> he went. <laughs> he uh, asked somebody. He uh, forgot it was his anniversary, and had somebody here go buy flowers. And 15 minutes before the show started, ran home to give the flowers <laughs> to Champion. his uh, SO there. So. Nice Good recovery. Save, and yeah. this is recorded, so everybody will know that you forgot. <laughs> it's not that he just, you know, is dedicated to our cause or anything. Uh, Thank you. Up next, we're going to keep the art rolling. Keep that art moving. With Power to the Poetry. Everybody yes. give a round of applause for Power to the Poetry. Come on up, guys. Hey, how's it going? Hi, how are you? Thanks for coming on. How are you, man? I'm gonna hand these mics well, out. And I'll, I'll, I'll. Ryan, I'll Ryan did the standing duty last time. You please all take a seat. Please, I'll yeah, just, have a seat. I'll just yeah. loom like right out of eye shot. <laughs> check, you'll you'll check, know check, I'm check. here, but here we go. Mic for you. Mic you check, grab that you? other mic to hand around for mic, everybody. Check, 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 check. There you are. Mic check, check. All right. Is it coming through? <laughs> we'll have to trade off. Sorry, right, we're great. a little mic low tonight. I got one. We're good oh, here. You got yeah. mic. He gets his own mic. He gets his own mic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, uh, tell me about Power to the Poetry. Oh. <laughs> you can figure out who the leader of the group is just by that kind of question alone. I guess since I'm like the already speaking, I can say a little bit and I'll hand the microphone over. So, Power to Poetry is, in essence, a movement, an expression, a living embodiment of positive, good vibe, and good energy. We are a tribe of warriors of light that help out and unite. We don't fight. We try to unite. We are a collective of philosophic perspectives infiltrating consciousness by expressing truth, shedding light on the subjects that expose legitimate issues. We are the spark that ignites the flame to stand up and be the change. We are agents of change motivating the masses to participate. We believe in the words that we speak, which is why we believe in power to the poetry. So yeah, you know, we're poets, so we gotta be po poetic in everything we do, but uh, Pretty much, Power to the Poetry is a performing arts organization specializing in spoken word poetry. Um, our movement raises awareness to social, cultural, political, and personal issues, addressing topics which cultivate crucial conversations and inspiring our audience to engage in action and change, uh, to engage in dialogue and action for meaningful change. And our motto is express, expose, ignite. I love it, that's fantastic. It, it, if you couldn't tell, we're, we're practicing for our TED Talk. We just have to practice every single day because we're totally cool. We're not nervous. It's fine. Who needs sleep? Who needs like friends? Who needs like food? Anything? Nah. It's just poetry, yelling, and occasional tears. If you get, are capable of producing them, yeah. then, then we welcome them. <laughs> but if you don't, I'm an easy crier. Oh, I really? Yeah. Listen, Same. I need a jar of that because I'm running on low. Running I haven't low. had a good yeah. cry in a very long time. Oh, it's been a rough month for me. So. <laughs> Uh, when, when, did, uh, when did this start? When did Power to the Poetry start? Uh, Power to the Poetry officially started the last day in February. I was kind of hoping you'd have a rhyme for like every question oh. I have for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get us started. AJ, AJ actually has a special talent and he can rhyme on the spot doing any word at all. If really just off the top yeah, of your head? Yeah, he's, he's Spokane's uh, premier extemporaneous poet. That's yeah. rad. If the crowd wants to yell ran random words to him, you could do it right now for you guys. I've seen you in here. It is pretty amazing. Yeah. Random. <laughs> Any other words other than that you want to add to the list? Uh, one more. Any? Unicorn. Bet. Unicorn. Random it's unicorn. Unicorn all the time. People for some like unicorns. <laughs> <laughs> Juxtaposition. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> So I was making love to my cosmic lover in ways to display things you would not even see. We decided to do a couple random positions and poses, if you understand what I truly mean. It was the diving unicorn. It was creative, imaginative, in ways you cannot even imagine. So the random position and how we get our ways in different convections and why we do things and how we structure ourselves and fixture our ways and things not even possibly say. She was random, but I called her karma because she was life to me in different ways. Sure, she's random to me and everything she gives me to do and say, but I like her unicorn position anyway. Oh my God. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. That's great. So that's one thing about me. Uh, I do poetry at the top of the head. 
my philosophy is poetry can be extrapolous, it can be flowetry, it can be any kind of form of conversation with somebody else listening in the room. Poetry is the icebreaker that starts the conversation, but sometimes people forget that this is a literation nation where we have a conversation, have the time, have the speech, have the rhyme, but people don't listen to that no more. They want lyrics and facts, so we're gonna bring them that. <laughs> Ain't no more snores. Oh, man. He, he literally never stops doing that. Is this a he talent you've always had? I just, since I was about 12 years old, I think it was after I got jumped, kid hit me in the back of the head with cement block, I woke up, First thing I thought to myself was, man, my mom's gonna whoop my butt. <laughs> and then the second thought was, oh crap, mom right there. Wait, mom, butt. And then I got slapped again. Yeah. And then I think that's what started the process. This sounds like a superhero origin story. Yeah, absolutely. It you is. just don't know my absolutely. life. We just became best friends. <laughs> uh, how can people get involved in Power to the Poetry? So a great way to get involved with Power to the Poetry is to come to our open mics, which are right here. We have one coming up uh, this Tuesday, October or September 25th. Uh, Sign-ups are at 545, and you can perform poetry on this stage. We would love to see you there. We also welcome uh, comedians, storytellers, musicians, basically any kind of creative person. We would love to see you, and we just really encourage your authentic voice to show up and just say what you have to say. Let me tell you something right now, children. If you have a gift or a talent or ability, or you feel as if you're the most righteous of righteous talent that you think you got, Come to this spot and show us all what you got. The conversation's what you make of it, so, I mean, they should already know. Oh, man. We got the flow. <laughs> Starting to question my sexuality. Uh, <laughs> I don't do you, you it. You get used to it. <laughs> That's what they say. Uh, now, obviously, you mentioned that uh, you can come right here on September 25th. Are there any other events coming up that you know of that uh, Ooh, I'm can, glad can, you people, can people find you on social media, stuff like that? Well, yeah, we have both Facebook, Snapchat, and uh, Instagram. Just power to the poetry? Power number two, two, the poetry. Okay. So some of y'all already got your phones out. If you're not recording or playing Facebook facts, you can just go ahead and look us up. That's power the number two. The poetry. I will check my phone later. I'm gonna be looking at y'all, kind of weird and crazy. <laughs> but we also have a couple other events that are gonna be coming up along the horizon. Uh, ironically, one of them will be uh, featured at Terrain. You know, shout out to them. Thank you for giving us opportunity for that. Yeah. And uh, another thing also will be the TED Talk that was also mentioned. That's gonna be coming up uh, real soon. Yep, so October 6th. Get your tickets. And you're gonna see us do a lot of crazy things. That's fantastic. <laughs> well. Uh, I, that's all I really had. I, I, thank you guys so much for coming on. I think it's a really great program. It's it's really. I mean, you heard AJ like that. I, I could watch that all night. <laughs> and just make dreamy eyes at you, but <laughs> and he will. So as I look at you too. So, AJ AJ is a AJ, model too. AJ AJ's a model too. So I think I just got replaced officially. <laughs> it's been fun, guys. Thank you. you know, thank you. Your, your beard's even a little sharper than mine. I got nothing. Hey, hey, I got nothing. I do modeling and beard modeling. I'm just saying, I know a guy, if you ever want to do some beard modeling with me. Yeah. Just hanging out, dude. I'm just hanging out. Man, hey. <laughs> Power to the Poetry. Please check them out. Give them a big round of applause. Give Thanks it up, so everybody. Much, you guys. Thanks for coming out. Would you guys have a yeah, perform? We're going to have you perform really quick. I think it's time to see some actual Power to the Poetry and uh, performance motion. Let's Got see. It? Do we have one more mic or not? It's a little closer. How many man kiss, kisses kiss, are happening kiss, at this show? Kiss, kiss. Using positive energy to spread good vibes. We, we believe love is the key to unlock peace. Anything is possible. Nothing is out of reach. There is a light within us all, but we must close our eyes to see. When we look inside, we find our inner light leading us in the direction which is always right. The fire within eternally burns bright because the good in us never truly dies. So we fight. 
on a mission that will last until the end of time. Giving life to the guiding light in which the lost among us can always find. Using our words to ignite humankind. Power, Power to, to the, the poetry, poetry, the, the warriors, warriors of light. This, yeah, sorry, you guys, that's so awkward. You don't know when to clap. You, no. you, you snap <laughs> if you want, if you feel some vibes, snap with us right now. Yeah. We just getting started, baby, don't worry. Get, get your snappers ready, folks. Yes, get your snappers ready. That's one thing, every time, you know, I go to an open mic or a slam, you never know when the poet is done. So you just are like, oh, hopefully I don't clap. One time I clapped and they were actually still going and I messed them up and I felt terrible. <laughs> But okay, this next piece is about New Year's resolutions. Who here made a New Year's resolution? Mm -hmm, I think more y'all did. Y'all just being humble right now. It's Come okay. On. It's all right. So, you know, I'm like, why don't people make important New Year's resolutions like treating other people the right way? What? You know, That's maybe, you know, ending racism, prejudice. Uh, no, are you sure? Oh, yeah, hold on some, now. something I, like that. You that know, that sounds like you know something new. I never heard of that. You Should know, you a, a lot of people say you know, New Year, New Me, but mm -hmm. you know, we say New Year, same, same me. me. Maybe not here, but now someone is being ostracized just because they are different. Society has always excluded those who stand out because they are afraid of the change that we preach in our campaigns. Here, here are, are some names. names. To join the truth. Rosa Parks. Martin Luther King Jr. Ida B. Wells. Malcolm X. Muhammad Ali. Tupac Shakur. Need, Need we, we say, say more? more? You see who we are. But do you see who we reach? Will society murder us because of the words that we speak? It's a new year and nothing's changed. Still disadvantaged because of our race. If life was truly a race, no one would start at the exact same place. And I truly wish we all could actually see pain so we may truly relate to the horrible agonies that people of color must face just because of hate. And I'm not one to make excuses, but the majority of this country is clueless. And no, I'm not new to this. For black people, this has never been news to us. Mama always told me, this life isn't fair. I got to grow up and conquer my fears, face my situation, and absolutely dominate it. A new year does not change who are perceived in this nation. Ironic that their philosophy is all hypothetical hypocrisy. Do you copy me? They want to walk like us, talk like us, act like us too. Well, if y'all want to play copy, don't get sloppy. Start on page 1619, not 2018. Play catch up for 400 years. Be treated differently for who you are and how you speak. Just because it's a new year doesn't give you an excuse to change your personality. From microaggressions to macro apologies, I hate being crucified for my philosophy. You see, I could reach the masses while holding your conscience captive. You say you want to be woke, well, I want to be free. No longer a slave to society, these shackles to be ripped off my feet. We're so blind as a nation, when will we ever see that the way to escape from the ghettos is not only to be an athlete? So forget your track meets and your basketball teams. Just like Martin Luther King, I have a dream that one day we won't have to run fast or jump high to be valued in everybody's eyes. We will reach for the skies, come together and unify. That one day we will truly be free and fight for equal rights for every single human being. You see, we think we're free, but we're still under aggression from the white man's pressure as if we'll never learn our lesson. You see, I would ask about your race without sounding like hate, but in this time that we live right now, we'll never learn our lesson. We are kings and queens with equal dreams. You would know that, but you never ask questions. Are you like me, a product of privilege in 2018? Well, guess what? We don't get to be selfish if our ancestors stood on the backs of everyone else's. If we're safe in the streets from these murderous police, we must use our privilege to serve others. It's the least we can do. And I feel your mental illness, your guilt, and your stress, but if you're college educated in the Pacific Northwest, I know it's hard to admit, but this is as good as it gets. And I'm not saying that your tears don't count. We can all fill a cup with the same amount. But here's what I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. We have a responsibility and an obligation in this God-forsaken nation to dismantle the structures our grandfathers built that keep us on the top and keep other people out. The work is essential and it has to start now. So stop asking why me and start asking how can I be of service to my community. So it was seen. Our lesson is through. So tell us. 
Have you figured out what to do? If so, then go now and be the breakthrough. Because maybe not here, but now someone is being ostracized. Just because they are different. Society has always excluded those who stand out. Because they are afraid of the change that we preach in our campaign. Power, Power to, to the, the poetry. poetry. Remember, Remember the, the name. name. That was amazing. That was um, we had a bit that we, we that our writer Ben was gonna do, where he, he was gonna do like a beat Nikki, like bad poem, but that was really heavy and really important, and uh, we decided to cut it. Yeah, no need to detract. <laughs> it was just an because example of how dumb we are. I was not prepared for uh, for how powerful that was. That's so fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. yeah, that was amazing. Power of the Poetry. Please check them out. It's fantastic. Yeah. They do come here every month, so, uh, you know. Great use of the stage. Good. Lavoie, everybody. Uh, Lavoie, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, this one's a brand new one. Um, it was uh, recently recorded, not quite finished, almost, once we get the important stuff. Oh, this one's for you, Ryan. Fantastic. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, good stuff. It sounds fantastic. Thank you. Check them out soon. I'm move so this we are, we're, bit. this is, this might be one of the longest running shows we've done. It might we're, be. We ran a little long because of our uh, technical issues, so. But yeah. 
Uh, we have just a couple more things for you, though. We get a, uh, Do you want to bring down the, the thing? Oh, sure. Our good pals, Jordan Satterfield and uh, Morgan Lynch, and uh, our in-house camera wizard, uh, Darian Mack, uh, have a new Every Damn Burger episode. If you haven't been here in the past, uh, Jordan and Morgan go around, and they're eating every hamburger in Spokane. And they've been to quite a few places, yep. but uh, I think I'll wait to reveal what, where they actually go this time, and I think <laughs> it's pretty amazing. So, <laughs> uh, so every damn burger, everybody. You get uh, every damn burger, everybody. <laughs> Told you I was back. Straight to the gutter. Onion boy was born in the gutter, and he will die in the gutter. Yeah, real funny. All of them! All of them! I got all of them! That's called a strike, Morgan. <laughs> Am I learning right now that I again like dipping french fries in ketchup because I've hated it since I was a kid? That's not a crazy thing to do. It's actually a super normal thing to love. No, and I get that, but I always thought I hated it. It's really good. I kind of like it. It's the hot, the cold, salty, sweet, I love dipping. creamy, crunchy. I love dipping, but I always thought I hated ketchup. You love dipping? I love dipping. Mm. So is our ketchup. The main dipper. <laughs> First of all, his technique is bullshit. He's clearly using the Oppenheimer style, which has been outdated since the 70s. Also, he's cocky as shit, which totally keeps his confidence up, but his accuracy down. It's a bad combo. <laughs> so is there ketchup on the burger? No, just mayonnaise. This is ideal. I'm really, actually, super stoked about this. It only has burger ingredients on it, which well, is that's perfect. That's true, that's true. It is mm -hmm. a very straightforward thing. I I'm love this use size, the too. To it's put perfect. Ketchup on the burger, since wait, there wait, wasn't wait. any, which is nice, because everyone's eyes Wait, wait, wait. Oh, there's a little french fry stowaway on mine. <laughs> he doesn't know he's about to die. Oh! Oh, sorry, did I ruin it? I, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously her footing is all wrong. She's got a wrong weight on the ball, for sure. Like, she throws it super awkwardly. She's got this insane curve that she's not accommodating whatsoever. She might be the worst bowler of all time. You have to just be really, really ruth, like ruthless. Yeah, I'm ready to be ruthless. Merciless, just like, yeah, no. Oh, fuck, I have another one. She didn't even, she didn't even know it was her turn again. <laughs> oh. Ignore that, that was horrible. That was horrible. I got eight. This is... This is a pretty little burger rainbow. I don't like this. Yeah, this actually looks great. So here we go. No. No, this is uh um, You're you hate I'm sorry. You hate cheeseburgers. No, I don't. This doesn't I mean Here's no. the deal. No, it's It's exactly what I would hope. Like I'm not expecting a world class burger. No. I'm expecting something that tastes like a bowling alley and it super does and I love it. It's like it's simple, it's cheesy, the meat is warm, it's got a bun on it. What more could you ask for? <laughs> oh, buddy. Merely from the fact Buddy that escaped. Oh, I used to never get eaten. Why? I'm not gonna eat him now because he escaped. Feel bad for him? Yeah, he earned his right to live. It is falling apart though. Look at this situation. This is not. I'd eat it if it wasn't covered in pickle juice. Oh, seven, cute. Oh, real, yeah, hilarious. <laughs> One. I mean, okay. Let's be real. The meat. <laughs> it could just be. It could be styrofoam. It doesn't taste like anything. It tastes like warm. Like let's not let's okay. Like I like that we've we've now judged this from a bowling alley perspective, mm -hmm. and I like that that's what this is. But at the same time, we got to be a little bit real and say, don't come to North Pole just for the cheeseburger. 
No, good point. Don't come to North Bowl just for the cheeseburger. <laughs> That's what we've just learned. But if you're at North Bowl and you want to eat some warm beef covered in a bun with cheese on it, get a cheeseburger. Just eat it, it's food. I have to get my lead back. That'll help. All right, this little buddy is gonna take his final journey. You are gonna eat him. Good night, sweet prince. What did you name him? Sweet prince? Sweet prince. Mm -hmm. I named him Throat Slitter. <laughs> they have a pretty good burger. We said it. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> every day burger, I, it kills me every time. <laughs> boink, boink, boink. Kills me. Uh, you can find Every Damn Burger, one word, on Instagram. Uh, please check out their journey into the Spokane burger world. Delicious it's and fantastic. delightful. <laughs> uh, up next, we keep the laughs rolling with our comedian, Hannah Tilly. Hannah, come on out. Give it up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I told her I'd bring her a, a, a stool, uh, but uh, no dice. Sorry, Hannah. It's oh, okay. Um, you're good. This is just my set list. So <laughs> anyway, um, I'm really excited to um, be at the library doing this. I really like the library. Um, I'm not just saying that so that my debts will be forgiven. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but uh, Deborah, if you could put it on the record, please. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so uh, I went to Eastern um, State Hospital. <laughs> um, um, my counselor told me that I should be on drugs for depression. I said, yeah, I already do drugs. <laughs> um, I like to speed through school zones. Um, that way, if there are any children at play, I'll hit them. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, do you guys love your dogs? <laughs> yeah, me too. I love my dog um, when nobody's watching. There's a, there's a new study out saying that 95% of people who die by suicide regret it. <laughs> I really like LeBron James. Uh, I would say he's like my favorite baseball player. <laughs> one, one time I applied for a job at Jimmy John's and one of their interview questions was, if I could have any superpower, what would it be? And I said, Batman. <laughs> um, <laughs> and they actually hired me. <laughs> um, but I never showed up to work, because I figured Batman had better things to do than make sandwiches. <laughs> um, um, so uh, what did the alligator order at the bar? <laughs> uh, nothing. He didn't have any money. Um, sometimes when I'm shaving in the shower, I cut myself, but that's only when I'm really sad. <laughs> I think it's really depressing that Mace has a best if used by date. Um, that means I need to be assaulted at least five times before 2021 <laughs> if I want to get my money's worth. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder whether or not I'd be able to kill another human. And then I remember, yes. <laughs> when people ask me if I'm a day or a night person, I say neither. The question doesn't really apply to reptilians. <laughs> you know your family's got some pretty bad problems if they're going on Mori to find out who the mom is. I don't know if you guys have heard, but Daniel Day-Lewis is going to be in a new film in 2019. Uh, it's actually a biography about himself, so he doesn't really know how to prepare. <laughs> so, uh, so a bartender walks into a bar. 
because, well, he has to go to work. <laughs> uh, I'd like to see Jake Gyllenhaal become a porn star and call himself Snake Gyllenballs. <laughs> Um, my one and only insecurity is being a human. <laughs> um, I do not have any children with shaken baby syndrome um, anymore. <laughs> um, uh, I don't really have a lot of friends. Uh, I don't know why, but um, I like not having a lot of friends because it frees up time for me to like play Monopoly and fly kites with myself. <laughs> Um, well, anyway, uh, I bought a bag of peas from the store, and they were called petite peas, but when I cooked them, they just looked like regular size, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> um, um, my doctor told me my ears are clogged with wax. I said, what? <laughs> Uh, I'd like to see serial killers play geocache. <laughs> uh, I once missed two days of work playing Sims. Um, I don't really know if that was real or in the game. <laughs> Zoologists like to say that despite hyenas resemblance to cats and dogs, they're actually neither and they shouldn't be bred with either because that would be interspecies breeding. But that's like why I'm doing it, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I do think a lot about suicide, like all the people I wish would like just do it. <laughs> um, my friend asked me if I've ever tried crystal light. I said, no, uh, I've only ever done regular meth. <laughs> Over the summer, I wanted to do some new and fun things, so um, I went floating with my friend. Well, like, sort of, he floated because I killed him. <laughs> um, um, I don't eat eggs when I'm on my period. It just seems really counterproductive. <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's no seatbelts on buses because the people who ride the bus aren't really worth it. <laughs> um, I just have one more. <laughs> um, what did Prince say when his mom wouldn't give him another cookie? What? Uh. <laughs> okay, well, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sam. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Grab the mic. Okay. Grab it off there. Yeah. I don't know if these people want to hear any more from me. <laughs> <laughs> you got some pretty dark material there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I live for it. Yeah. Uh, you have a kind of classic style. Just straight jokes, like a Dangerfield yeah. style. I dig mm -hmm. it. I like that. Do you, uh, how long? When did you start doing comedy? Uh, about two years ago. Two years? <laughs> yeah. And uh, any, like, uh, shows coming up that you have? I don't have any shows coming up. <laughs> no. You have an album out? Not, no. Uh, <laughs> find you on mixtape. YouTube? Or? No YouTube. Okay. <laughs> I have uh, 250 friends on Facebook, though. <laughs> uh, well... <laughs> You do also have a, a, a unique style that, uh, that I also have. I laugh at my own jokes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it's just about being like silly with yourself. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, I, I just laugh because it's silly to me. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any uh, you know, uh, comic role models that you uh, adopted a style after? or do you? Uh... Uh, I didn't mean to, but early on, a lot of people equated me to, with Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. And he is one of my favorites. Absolutely. But I haven't watched an extensive amount yeah. Of him, really. I just really like him. Yeah. And I like Stephen Wright. They're both one-liners. Yeah, so absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, that's He's more meandery, though. You've, you've got a very nice, yeah, precise... Yeah, good pace. Yeah, I'm not as yeah. cool as them, is what you're saying. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you're, you're not clearly as drunk on stage as Mitch Hedberg. <laughs> or Don You had, you had a rough, yeah. rough go. Yeah. <laughs> well, Hannah, thanks so much for yeah. coming on. Great set. Thank you. And, I appreciate uh, it. <laughs> please look for Hannah Tilly. <laughs> Thank thanks. you.
We're going to wrap up the show here. Uh, you know, we had we had kind of a rough start to season two with really? uh, some technical difficulties. But you know what? It's only going to get more polished. We're going to have great guests coming up. Just building uh, on it. Thank you so much for sticking around and duking it out with us through those hard parts. I really appreciate it. Thanks again so much for coming out. I want to thank all my guests. Thanks for coming to Lilac City Welcome Live. Welcome to season two. Thanks, everybody. Have a great night. Hit it.